<laughs> Just do it. What's up, guys? We're live. Uh, Beastly Thoughts, episode 86. Getting up there, man. Every week. Oh, man. We gain another Four, number. 14 to go to that big 100. We add one to it every week. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I think at one point soon we're probably going to start falling over. I mean, we're going to get arthritis in our legs. and mm-hmm. oh, That's it's right. Coming. Yeah. You know, we'll, get, we'll get carpal tunnel first from all the fucking video games we play. You know, I'm surprised we don't have it already. Those game controllers must be designed much better than the old NES controllers because you'd think with all the games we play, we'd have some kind of hand issues. I just had to, right before the show, I swear to you, not 30 minutes ago, take apart a DualShock 4 and repair it today. Oh, so, what was wrong with it? Well, the R, the R trigger uh-huh. snapped. It's, it snapped? Uh, but, yes. Damn, and I had, I had to that re- battlefront, huh? <laughs> I, I had to uh, refer to my. Well, own video. Die! Die! <laughs> <laughs> I had to refer to my own video. I had to go back to my video log to find the video that I made on how to fix this shit. So I watched my own video and felt great and fixed it. it took about five minutes. Yeah, those those are triggers, man. They will snap. They will mm-hmm. go in a heartbeat if you put too much pressure on them. Yeah. So that- PlayStation 4, for as comfortable as that controller is and well designed as it is, it's not very well built. Not durable. Yeah. No, it's not durable. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I have a similar story. Is every once in a while, in my Twitter feed, somebody will like that video that I did of how to record voice chat uh, with your Elgato mm-hmm. on a PS4 because that's like somewhat difficult to figure out. But once you know how to do it, it's actually not too hard. And uh, I was recommending that video to somebody because they asked me about it, so I just fed them the uh, link to it. And I hadn't watched the video since I made it, really. And I had forgotten that at the beginning of the video, I told, like, I, I said, hey, guys, can you hear me? And it was, like, some 12-year-old kid <laughs> saying, yeah, we can hear you. Or, no, hey, say your say my name if you can hear me. And so they say, okay, Briar Rabbit. And I said, okay, now say it's sexy. Yeah, <laughs> like, I remember that. Damn, I, don't, I didn't realize how pedo that sounded. <laughs> I remember that. I, I fucking remember that. It was great. I haven't watched that video good. in forever. Oh, uh, somebody was asking me about it, so I watched it again. I was like, oh, wow. And it's amazing <laughs> how, how much your how much your kind of content morphs over time. Oh, so, man. I want to do what you've been playing, but I want to start with a story. Sweet. Okay, so yesterday... I had a I had a couple hours to kill before uh, date night. Every night's every date night is Saturday night. Every Saturday night is date night around here. We have a standing appointment so me and Jan can get away uh, and just enjoy being you know a couple. So I had a couple hours before that. So I hopped on Battlefront. I had downloaded it. It's like an eight gigabyte download, mm-hmm. so it takes quite a while. Uh, but I had a little bit of time, so I jump on. I played a little bit of the. There's a small single player portion that you can play, or you can play it cooperatively, just to get used to the controls. And you jump into the multiplayer, and there's two levels that you can play in the multiplayer. I jumped into the War on Hoth, which is pretty cool. You know, if you've seen the movies, if you've seen Empire Strikes Back, you'll be instantly familiar with this War on Hoth in Battlefront. Big snow level, and all of a sudden, I'm running through the fields. Got my sniper rifle out, and somebody pops me in the freaking head. <laughs> and I see the kill feed, and it's fucking Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where this is going. I'm like, oh shit, it is on. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I immediately, as soon as I see somebody that I know in the kill feed, it's on, right? Like full hard mode engaged, right? Try hard pants, I'm like pulling up my try hard panties, <laughs> yeah. making sure they're well adjusted. <laughs> And I'm getting to it, right? So I see I see Robbie, and I've got that sniper rifle, work, right? That sniper rifle is absolutely OP. If you haven't played Battlefront it yet, sure unlock that really sniper good. rifle. It's absolutely stunningly good. And uh, I'm watching around. I'm looking for Robbie. I'm not shooting people just so I could save that shot for Robbie. <laughs> oh, my God, Briar. <laughs> so I zoom in on one guy. I'm like, wait a minute. That's the fucking beastly gamer. <laughs> <laughs> The two of them are playing together. They're on the other team. Right there, I know. <laughs> we just randomly got match made against each other, which was awesome. So, I don't know. What do we play? Two games? Three games? Yeah, about two like, games. Against each other. And uh, unfortunately, I couldn't join party chat. You guys invited me to party chat. And unfortunately, I couldn't join because I had, you know, the wife talking to me about where we're going and all that stuff. But, man, it was awesome just randomly getting match made. <laughs> Against you guys in Battlefront. That was hilarious. 
I actually we didn't Robbie Robbie you found Briar and then you invited me to that match right yeah I joined the match and then I said hey let's get in let's see if Briar notices I'm gonna kill him and then see what his reaction is so yeah it was worth it Briar I wish you could have been in the party so you could hear me rage um, Kate Kate was in the game too wasn't she Robbie yeah she was yeah, playing Kate was in there bit. yeah she was yeah. in there uh, Briar you sniped me three times in a row and when I say when I say in a row there's 20 players per team. You were you killed me three times consecutively <laughs> with a sniper. Didn't even give your teammates an option to get any of that action. And by that third kill, I said, "God damn it, Briar!" And I finally got one kill before you left. And I just thought that made me feel a lot better. But I was like, "How is this guy killing me and nobody else is killing me?" At by one himself. point, I thought Robbie had just disappeared because me and Robbie must be must have been spawned on a different side of the map. That map, but is I saw huge. you constantly. Like, me and you were just, like, we were in it the whole game. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, uh, yeah, you guys have been playing it. I've been playing it. Let's talk about it. BC, what are your thoughts about the Battlefront beta? Ah, man. Well, when I first booted it up after the initial install and I started, me and Kate, we played the co-op mode, which is kind of like a horde mode where you go out into the world, and then you've got wave after wave of enemies coming. It's, like, limited to, like, is it six levels in the beta or seven levels? It's limited to, like, seven levels, and, like, the full game will have, like, 15. Yes. Yeah. And and when I first saw the game, I was a really breathtaking at how beautiful it looked, right? How yeah, fast it was. Yeah. That frostbite, God, it's cold as ice because that frostbite <laughs> is fucking sick. Uh, we played that. I thought that was really fun and engaging. You can play that online or offline co-op, even split screen, which is something that I liked. Then Kate and I jumped into the 16-player 8v8 which I really like. That's when you're basically taking a particular zone. or You're, you're taking a... It's like a satellite that drops. Mm-hmm. You go and you, you hold it away from the opposing team for a, a certain amount of time. And if you can hold it for that period of time, then that's a point for you. Five, uh, five and you get like some power-ups too. Yeah, every time that you hold one and complete that point, power-ups come out of it and you get to... It's basically like kill streaks come out of it and yeah. you can use those like turrets and whatnot and that that forty player mode at first I could not deal with it. It was mm-hmm. just too frantic. So much going on. ATXTs everywhere. You know, there's X wings in the sky. Yeah, Darth Vader I running fight. around whipping your ass with a lightsaber. I was like, oh my god, I need to take a step back. And then I realized I was playing my game and it was not in game mode. My TV was on regular, vivid. So I was getting all kind of latency and I was trying to figure out why I was dying over and over. Okay, again. all right, all right, hold on now. You have your TV in vivid. Yes, oh, my, no. son, my son. My son. <laughs> my, 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 mine is custom. Okay, my son had messed with it uh, because they were out of school since last Thursday, so they were in there goofing around, and I didn't know it because it's always in game mode. And I told Robbie when we played uh, yesterday that for like the first three or four hours, I thought it was in game mode, and I thought I just sucked. I'm playing with my wife; she's destroying the other team. I'm getting three kills and fifteen deaths, and so I finally figured that out. But I gotta say, I'm really I'm impressed with what me, I've seen so far. Let me just talk about that real quick. For anybody who doesn't understand, when you buy a TV, a lot of TVs have uh, a lot of processing that goes into the picture. So your signal comes into the TV with an HDMI port, uh, and then the TV takes it and processes it. Maybe it's doing like some color correction. Maybe it's doing uh, some post-processing. Maybe it's just doing some like filtering. But whatever it's doing, that takes a little bit of time. And it's, that time is measured in milliseconds, but it can be the difference between snapping on a target in a video game and killing the guy or snapping on the target and you're already dead, right? Exactly. So oh. a lot of TVs have a game mode, and that game mode will often bypass all that processing. So the you're getting more of um, – well, you're getting a faster response time. From it's almost real, uh, almost real time. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's much better. It made a world of difference, and that was the, the paradigm shift that made me go from I fucking hate this game, this is a Battlefield rehash, to this game is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's I, a I, lot of fun. Yeah, I, I was really pleasantly surprised by it. Um, there's one thing that I don't know if it'll matter as much in this game, but I'm thinking that a lot of people, especially fans of the Star Wars series, are going to have issues with this game not having a story or a campaign mode because the Star Wars, Star Wars universe is built on characters, is built on story. It's built on this world that we all know so well. And to play a game that seems this polished, the network worked perfectly, Briar. I never got kicked out of one game. Even the 20 versus 20, the network worked flawlessly. So 
it's very polished, but there is no story. And I'm thinking that a lot of people who really have been engaged in the Star Wars movies and, and the lore and the books for all these years are going to want some of that. But from what I've seen in the multiplayer space, it's really, really impressive. Uh, of course, you only get two maps for multiplayer. I never really got tired of the maps. You get different perks that you can equip before a map. You get, There's different weapons you can try. That sniper is ridiculous. Yeah, the sniper's yeah. cool, too, because it's got a cooldown timer on it. So yeah. you, you get you don't, you basically get unlimited ammo. In all but, weapons, yeah. Yeah, but it's got a cooldown timer, so you can you can pop off one shot, but then you got to, like, basically stow it and wait for that cooldown timer to take... Yeah, what's it take, like, five, 15 seconds? 10 I guess 15 seconds? seven seconds. I Is it, it's it. that short, so it... it it's, it actually feels like you can shoot, fire it quite a few times, but um, there is that. Like, if you miss a shot, you're not doing a follow-up shot. You've got to shoot for the head, and you've got to hit the head. Yeah, yeah like three times in a row. That's <laughs> 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 exactly what you did to me. i, I got to say, though, uh, they really nailed the atmosphere. Just in this beta, when you're on these different planets, when you're on Hoth, when you're running around with your, with your, your blaster in your hand, and you look up in the sky... You see X-Wings and ships flying back and forth. Yeah. They really encapsulated that feeling of Star Wars. You As, really feel like... Spherically, it's like perfect, right? It's it like it's really, got the music playing. The really it. sounds are right on the head. Fucking Darth Vader all of a sudden shows up behind you and starts chasing you down like you're you're about to get a, be a whip dog. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I was playing yesterday and I saw Vader coming and I got really, really petrified. And then one of my teammates spawned as Luke. And they mm -hmm. went at it right in front of me, and I just stood there and I watched. I didn't care who tried to kill me or anything. To me, it was like an epic moment in gaming history to actually see these two behemoths going at each other, and unfortunately, Vader won. But I was amazed at uh, Luke Skywalker taking a knee and kind of just kneeling in the middle of the battlefield. I was like, it was one of those moments. I was like, wow, this is really, really awesome. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think that a game like this, of course, they show, what, eight modes, only two unlocked for the beta? Yeah. Uh, Robbie, what do you think? I have a lot to say about this. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there are only two maps. I think the maps are great, and I think the modes are great, and I feel like I'm more there, confident. There's three. There's game. three maps. There's Tatooine. There, there's yeah, that there's rock one. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, so there's three maps, but only two in multiplayer. Yeah. You know, I think overall, this beta is incredible. I did not expect it to be this good. I mean, as soon as I started playing for like the thir first 30 minutes, I had so many... Chills on my spine. I have, like, the Star Wars nostalgia come back to me. I mean, first of all, the game sounds incredible. You hear, like, TIE fighters, like, firing their lasers, and you hear X-Wings, and the sound is amazing. It sounds like Star Wars, and I could just play the beta just for the sound. Like, it is so goddamn cool. Mm -hmm. And it feels like you're playing a Star Wars movie come to life. You're in that battle. You're one of those soldiers, either as the Rebels or the Imperials, and especially when you get those power-ups, you get to use an ATS to you, you're flying an X-Wing or a TIE Fighter. It feels like Star Wars, and it feels incredible. Like, here's the thing, too, because this is developed by DICE. A lot of people were saying, oh, this feels a lot like Battlefield. It has some similarities. I'd say but this does feel like Star Wars. I think it's incredible. I have to it agree. I, I'd have to agree with you there. At first, I really thought that it was very reminiscent of the Battlefield uh, system. How mm -hmm. you know? But then again, I was, I was running in latency. I had a latency issue. When I finally caught up to game mode and started playing it, it really felt like Star Wars. The way the characters move when you use your booster, your jetpack, and you boost across the map. You've that seen threw me it. off at first. That didn't feel like Star Wars to me. To me, it, it did. To it me, felt it felt weird like to me at first. But I got used to it, and that, I really, I'm glad it's in there because it, it feels yeah, fun I, and exciting to use. That's something that I've seen people in the series use. You know, Boba Fett uses something kind of similar, but he can mm -hmm. fly around. It felt really awesome to me. The only thing that I think um, from the beta that I saw that really reminded me of Battlefield was the kill cam. When somebody kills you, they turn red yeah. and you see them running around. That was like the only yeah. thing that I really noticed. But I'm I'm super impressed with what I've seen so far. The game looks like Battlefield. It, I shouldn't say that. It looks like it's built on the Frostbite engine. So if you play Battlefield 4 or Hardline, yep, you'll be familiar. The, the fidelity of the graphics is going to be familiar to you. The way the light works, the, bl the way light blooms when you're coming out of a dark tunnel into the daylight and you can't see anything out of there, yeah. it's a cool effect. I don't know if it's... I don't know if it really has a place in a video game because ultimately it just makes it hard <laughs> to yeah. see, you know? But, it, I mean, it definitely looks like a Battlefield game. That Frostbite engine is definitely in full effect. 
to some extent, I think it feels like a Battlefield game. They, they've definitely changed the gameplay up, but the way the characters move... That reminds me of Battlefield. It feels definitely. a lot like Battlefield. It feels faster than Battlefield uh, and more casual than Battlefield. Like, it doesn't definitely. feel as hardcore. Like, I agree, yeah. Well, um, it's, it's casual in some ways. Did yeah. you ever try to invite a friend to join you in this? No, I haven't. You've got to go through more tabs. Uh, 9 to 5 Gamers, you guys check out his channel. I talked to him on Twitter. He didn't even know that you could invite people and party up because the menu system is so convoluted. Robbie, myself, and my wife played yesterday for a while, and it took forever just to get it right. You've got to send someone a party invite. They've got to hit triangle. Then they've got to accept that. Then you got to uh, invite them to be your partner. Then they got to open up another subscreen and accept that. Then you got to go to the, the actual stage where you want to get into a game. Once you get into a game, you're actually gone by yourself. Then the person that you've invited has to hit triangle, open up another sub menu, and accept the match that you just joined. So It's a little it's, weird. Yeah, I'm really happy my wife figured it out because if she didn't, I would have been solo like a mug. Because <laughs> she, she, you know, she's quick as a whip, so she knew exactly what was going on, but it was really confusing. And hopefully by the time this game comes out, more than likely they won't because it's built kind of on a Battlefield-ish system, it'll still be confusing as hell. But mm-hmm. people That's don't been know. one of the complaints for uh, like the hardcore Battlefield enthusiasts who've come to this game is that there are no private servers, there's no server browser, it's all just matchmaking. It's all skill-based matchmaking. So you can't... <clears throat> You know, people who are used to playing Battlefield are used to being able to, <clears throat> excuse me, start up a server, get 64 people in there, and then manage the rule set on that server, manage who's in that server, uh, be able to kick cheaters out of that server, stuff like that. And this is, this it feels more like a much more simplified, like a Call of Duty matchmaking system. And yeah. uh, you know, that's good for casuals, right, who don't want to deal with um, server browsers. But it's bad for people who, you know, want to be able to play with their friends. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd agree. It does seem more casual than Battlefield. I could even change my weapon in Battlefield. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be forever to figure out, too, basically. It's like, how come I can't just, like, go into a menu outside of the game? Yeah. Like, why do I have to be in the game to be, like, able to modify it? That always felt weird. But that that's... was a little weird. That's yeah, a little, well, that's, that's a, a game. Call of Duty at Battlefield. There. That's I remember, Briar. You and I a long time ago when we first got to play Battlefield with some of the other guys from the show. We had the same consensus that we hated it. It felt yeah. so weird. It just felt outside of our box. And I I was 100 percent with you there. And I think that was like the last time I played it. So it's one of those situations. I don't think that Star Wars is going to be that way though. It feels very fresh. It feels really fun. Yeah, the, the weapons are fun to use. It definitely needs some balancing right now. Um, there's definitely some weapons that are way more powerful than other weapons. <laughs> like, now, let me ask you a question. Yeah. The, the the kill streaks that are introduced into this game, you don't power actually ups. get these kill streaks power ups. You don't actually get these by killing people. You actually just walk around the map. If you see a hologram, you stand within that hologram, and bam, you got a new ability, a new weapon, something like that. Do you think that that's Fair? Do you think that people who are doing the most kills should be rewarded more, or do you think that this new system? Well, is, that's I the guess, difference, right, between a, a real hardcore game and a more casual game, right? Is with this system, everybody gets the chance at those power ups. I will say that the hardcore players, the people who get good at this, are going to get better at protecting those points where you get those power ups, uh, and like a team who's playing together will be able to areas, coordinate right. and. And you know, hold multiple of those points so their team can get more of those. But I think it makes it more fun for a casual player who, you know, maybe that I don't necessarily play a lot of bat- Battlefield. I don't play a lot of Call of Duty. I don't play a lot of first-person shooters. But I fucking love Star Wars, so I want to buy this game and check this out. I can just walk over this thing, and all of a sudden I'm Luke Skywalker. I can drive an AT-AT or an ST-AT or whatever it's called. You know, I can I can control this turret. You know, like that stuff is really cool, and it's super accessible to any player. What concerns me is, will this game have a long tail, or is it super fun for the first month and then it's over? Mm, only time will tell. That's yeah. definitely the question. I think part of what feels that too is this is going to have enough modes, which it seems like seven modes is pretty good, and the number of maps. Like we haven't seen what Endor is like. We haven't seen a lot of the other planets. Endor looks like, cool too with the, uh, the speeder bikes. Yeah, like that could be awesome. So I think 
in that in itself, there's going to be different vehicles on different maps that'll bring a great variety. I'm way more confident than I am now in this game. Like I was so so skeptical going into this, but wow, I think this game is incredible. I really do. They nailed the look and feel of Star Wars, and it feels Absolutely. incredible to play. Like I still get chills playing, and I hear a Tie Fighter zooming above me, shooting its lasers like that. It just sounds incredible. It, it's so cool. Let me just say this too, Mr. Rabbit. Uh, Robbie and I were talking before we saw you on uh, uh, Star Wars yesterday, Battlefront, and I was like, has Briar played this? And Robbie was like, I don't think so. He's just been on Destiny. And I was like, we, <laughs> we've got to get him off Destiny. We were going back and forth on how we were going to get you away from Destiny to try this game, and then Robbie messaged me. He said, he's on right now. So, <laughs> so, go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go. So I came and joined, and we're, we're both happy that you got a chance to experience. You guys know I'm a Star Wars fan, so I wasn't going to let this go. I mean, I, mean, I got, got R2-D2 R2 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 right yeah. there. <laughs> Darth Vader on the other side. Although I did get a new Destiny ghost. <laughs> <laughs> right back there. Right there. It's a plush ghost. It's plush. <laughs> so, um, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this game. It definitely... It, it became for me a day one purchase. Like I'm, I'm buying this game. I know I'm buying this game. I don't know that I'm gonna stick with it for a year, but I'm definitely buying this game and I'm gonna have fun with it. Good, good. Ditto. I agree, Robbie. I know you're day one as well. As long as it works. Yeah. Okay, well, that's day two. All right. So we know we've been playing. We know we've been playing Star Wars Battlefront. What else have you guys been playing uh, this week? Destiny, a lot of Destiny. Uh, we had some huge events in Destiny this week. Let me play the sound bite. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Sleeper Simulant quest got unlocked in Destiny, yes. so you could go out and get the Sleeper Simulant. If you were, if you had a bunch of time on Wednesday, then you could get the Sleeper Simulant on Thursday. Uh, that that quest probably all told took me about five hours. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't happy about it. But I'm not going to get into it because I've already talked about it at length. Okay. Um, I also we also heard that there's going to be microtransactions in Destiny, which upset a lot of people. But I think that cooler heads prevailed, and uh, Bungie came out and basically said that it looks like these microtransactions are going to pay for the year two DLC. Yes. So that everybody's going to get the year two DLC for free. What? Yeah. Yep. Damn. So things like the Dark Below and House of Wolves will not be... You won't have to pay for them. You'll just get them. Wow. Okay, well, that's... I think this is something we talked about a few months ago, that we could eliminate the, the cost of DLC by having small microtransactions, uh, and I think we were talking about Destiny. And yeah, I think... Like it, I, I remember that, too. I don't remember... I, I don't remember what episode it was, but, but I, it, I remember yeah. talking about something like that. Wow. We, we spoke it into reality. Beastly thoughts. But, uh, right. I mean, I'm actually pretty excited about this. You know, it's a slippery slope. DLC is a slippery slope. DLC. Microtransactions, like, my reference point, actually, I, I talked about this on the Planet Destiny podcast, and my reference point was that bow and arrow that you told me about from Last of Us. That you go out, you buy that bow and arrow, and you suddenly have the most powerful gun in the game. And that is exactly what I want to avoid with, with microtransactions, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't have any problem with cosmetic items. This is going to be emotes, so you basically get new dances, new gestures for your guardian. That's totally I don't have, fine. Right. I don't have any problem with shaders. I don't have any problem with emblems. But if they start introducing, you can buy, let's say, motes of light or strange coins. Or synthesis, maybe? Ammo synthesis? Uh, yeah. Anything like that with real money, i got a real problem with it. Me too. Yeah. Agreed. It's, it's to the point where, like, how they've announced it, it sounds like it's going to be great, like with these dances. I'm totally fine with that, but exactly, Briar, I agree with you 100%. If they go much further than that, which they definitely easily could go down that route, then I'm going to be like, okay, just scale back a bit. We're and they actually limit this. themselves a little bit because with the Taken King, more items that used to be solely cosmetic now have a light level attached to them, uh, like your ghost shell, like yeah. your uh, class armor. You know, that stuff now has perks in light level associated with it, so they can't sell that in microtransactions now. Mm. It's, well, uh, they can't, according to me. <laughs> well, I mean... Uh, they might be able to, according to them. You, you made a great point, and you're absolutely right. I, I do agree that, that uh, Bo and The Last of Us does une makes the game uneven. Uh, it unbalances multiplayer. Destiny's a game that I feel is 
really well balanced as far as multiplayer goes, as far as the whole video game goes, with all these changes that they've made, especially with the latest updates. Um, if they start introducing stuff that's not cosmetic, it could fuck up the balance, and hopefully they won't. You know? Yeah. All right, speaking of microtransactions, Star Wars Battlefront front won't have microtransactions. But they might have just been like little asterisks behind it at launch, and then it's coming <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess they'll just go by season passes. That's like, I'm okay with microtransactions in this. As long as they do it right, I think. Like, I think the whole thing with DLC and season passes and microtransactions, like, when you hear about it, initially everybody freaks out and thinks the worst possible thing. It's because we've been conditioned to think that. Exactly. Like, the <laughs> problem is the way companies have executed this, they've done it the wrong way. But if done the right way, like, I think in Destiny is doing it the right way with these emotes. I think that's great, but it's just don't get greedy and go too far with this. That's You yeah. just need to know your limits and do it responsibly. But, I mean, in Battlefront, they have a perfect opportunity to sell microtransactions. You know, they can sell different character models. They can yes. sell, you know, all sorts of stuff. I mean, they can go through the whole Star Wars anthology and pick characters from each movie and throw them yeah, in there. Right? Your X-Wing looks like this X-Wing. My X-Wing looks like that X-Wing. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Or TIE Fighter. You know, I get to drive Darth Vader's TIE Fighter instead of the regular one. Yeah. <laughs> or you get you a bright pink, uh, or you buy bright pink TIE Fighter for uh, one ninety nine. I, I wouldn't want to see that. I wouldn't want to see that. It's not <laughs> my aversion to pink that's <laughs> chilling it either. It's just that it would it would break that Star Wars immersion to see a pink Tie Fighter. <laughs> yeah, you know, part of the fun of this game is feeling like you're in Star Wars, like you're in the Battle of Hoth, and, and it that definitely feels that immersion. Like it. It, yeah. does, it does. It does. But they got so many characters they could choose from. You know, like those little bit characters. Like all of a sudden you see. You know, like Greedo running around with a blaster. That'd be hilarious, man. <laughs> hey, uh, before we continue, guys, I want to tell you guys something that happened to me uh, over the last week that I kind of come to the conclusion and realization of what it was. I, no, I didn't talk about what I played, so I'm kind of going to go into it a little bit right now. I've been playing my Xbox One all week. Other than Whoa. Star Wars Battlefront, I've been playing my Xbox One. I've been playing Dear God. I've been playing Tomb Raider. I've been playing uh, State of Decay. I've been playing Mortal Kombat on my Xbox One. And uh, I went through my list of games, and I got 30 Xbox One games. That's a pretty decent amount of content for my console. And uh, I think it was Tuesday, I was sitting there playing, I was having a blast. And my wife was sitting next to me on her PS4. And I looked over at her, and I said, how come I don't do this more often? And she told me pretty much the way I felt. She said, you probably feel like you're cheating on the PS4. I don't play my Xbox One... <laughs> enough because I feel like my PS4 is my place to play. And so I've come up with the conclusion that this is a medical condition that I like to call subconscious fanboyism, uh -huh. where, where subconsciously you're a fanboy of something and you don't really know it on the outward. And so I've kind of come to the realization that I'm going to start every week playing more of my Xbox One. The way I've been feeling is when I play it, I feel like I'm playing a demo or a game that's really not that important, and I look over at my PS4, which is right next to it, and I see like a teardrop coming down the side of my PS4, and so I immediately put the controller back up real quick and grab my PS4 and go. But yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to live that life. I don't want to be that guy. And so I pledge to give my Xbox One half of me. That was just something that happened to me this week. <laughs> I wanted to tell you guys about it because I, I, I like to be 100 with you guys, you know, and tell you the truth of what's going on with me and my gaming. I haven't been giving my Xbox One its due diligence. I haven't been giving it the, the credit that it deserves. There's some really awesome games on it. Have you guys yeah. played Dear, have you guys played Dear God? No, not yet. No, I gotta start that. I have it. Uh, that game is really beautiful, man. It's an awesome game. It's an awesome experience. It's kind of on, on its own level on the same like uh, area or same level as uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. It's like a game like that. It's just beautiful and different. And um, I have Mortal Kombat X. I haven't played it up until what, this week, but I had an absolute blast playing that this week. And it was on a real console, not a demo console. And and I think it all stems from my. I didn't pay a demo price for that console. <laughs> well, fuck, me neither. I, I paid full price for it too. I think that a lot of it stems from the feelings I used to have over the Xbox One when it was first announced 
that my my subconscious mind is like refusing to let that go, even though things have changed so yeah. much. Even though I like Phil Spencer in some ways more than Shuhei Yoshida, you know. <gasps> no. In some ways, the guy. It's a classy okay. guy, man. Uh, Shuhei to me is is the man. Oh, Phil Shuhei's Spencer the best. has. They're both Phil the Spencer best. has actually climbed that ladder for me, and made me respect what Xbox is doing. Made me respect the console. Made me respect their first party co- games. I just like the Xbox so much more after he came in and swept all the bullshit that Dynamatrix did out the door. Yeah. And so that's that was my week. And I wanted to tell you guys that because I'm going to actively try to change it. Because that's I, I awesome. Feel, yeah, well, subconscious fanboyism. Yeah, you see a lot of fanboy wars. You know, you see them on you know Reddit or you'll see them in uh, Twitch chats or even it's... in YouTube channel chats. And it's like, you guys, like... What what is the point of this argument? There is zero point. Like even if you were to theoretically win this argument, right? What do you win here? What do you no, what do you get out of this? It's completely pointless. And I gotta tell you guys, before I knew either of you, you have like, two companies that both have the same goal to take your money. Absolutely. Right? They want you know they want to repeatedly take your money, so they want to make you happy while they're while you're giving it to them. Mm-hmm. But they're not like they're not benevolent companies. You know they're not like. Uh, their interest is not, you know, their interest and your interest are not the same. Absolutely. Their interest, no. they are a company. Sony is a company. Microsoft is a company. They are there to make money. Our our interest is to give them money for a product that we really like. And if they can supp- supply that product, then we have a copacetic and healthy relationship. If we feel like we're getting screwed by one of them, like we did at the er, in the early days of the PS3 or the early days of the Xbox One, then there's a real problem. But... I mean, these companies—they're not looking out for you. <laughs> you know, like no. they, it's, you know they—they they don't have—they don't share the same kind of love you do for them. Absolutely, like, it's an irrational way of thinking. There's yeah. no point to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If if a good game comes out on the Xbox One and you have an Xbox One, play it and be happy you're playing it. If a good game comes out on the PS4 or the PC or the Macintosh or the Ouya or whatever, oh, whatever come on now, you know, be the happy Ouya. and play it. You know, be happy that you. You're there, you know. We got we got a deal in reality here. You said ooh yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, a word that gets said very often these days. That was a stretch. Yeah, Look, was, I'm still playing my Jaguar 64 and loving it, baby. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> you just mix two consoles together, I think. Jaguar 64. Jaguar 60. Well, look, why don't you just send me that? Let me borrow it for a, f- a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm going to sell the hell out of you. I don't think anybody has a Jaguar 64. But yeah, that was my uh, my my week. I'm happy to to tell you guys about it. And I'm going to change. I, I'm going to see a doctor about this <laughs> subconscious fanboyism. All right, so Robbie, you want to continue with our news? We got some. Evolve Ultimate Edition has been listed on Amazon. Fuck this game. <laughs> That's Do all not. I gotta say. I don't have to say anything. This people know I hate this game. I, like, here's the thing. I'm a happy person. I like being positive. I'm generally pretty nice, and I like to be excited about games. But bullshit. Evolve had to be the most disappointing game I've played in a long time. That let me down so much. I was so excited for it, and it just didn't turn out. Like, greedy, greedy corporate shit going on with that game, and it just it just didn't go well. well I, did, didn't they already drop the price of Evolve to $20? The last thing I heard was the game's price it dropped to $19.99. Now they've got this Ultimate well, Edition. Year old, with man. all the DLC, I mean, at least you don't just... Have to, for Waste bucks. money on all the skins and the season passes, so I don't think the game would still be that good, though. Just my two cents. It probably doesn't have any community to it anymore either. Oh, there, I, are pe- there are people who play. You know, I downloaded, it, re-downloaded, it, and played it about two weeks ago. And I played for about an hour, and that was all I could take because I had real games to play. But the community is there. I mean, there's still tons of people who play it. Every game I got into was a completely different lobby. People talking. Everybody talking about you know. The game that to them that was destiny. To yeah, people if if you like Evolve, that's awesome. Like I have no problem with that. I just I really look at the game and I just don't see a great product. That's <laughs> just my how I feel about it. The, the thing that turned it, me off. Awesome. The the one thing that really turned me off about that game was that it interrupt it interrupted chat when you were loading the game. Like you couldn't chat with your teammates while you were loading the game up, which I thought was like the most ridiculous thing. That was weird. So ruined the enjoyment of that game for me. Yeah. All right. Uh, Far Cry Primal has been announced. So this was basically teased as a screenshot, right? 
Yeah, so this was leaked early by IGN Turkey, which uh, they had a long-going live stream. There was like a cave painting, a cave wall with a bunch of like cavemen on it and different uh, prehistoric animals. So then on Tuesday, this game was announced. It's a Far Cry game set in 10,000 BC, and I gotta tell you guys, I am stupid excited for this game. I love Far Cry, and I love anything prehistoric. I am so goddamn excited for this game. Like, Seriously, Briar, I know you have an unopened copy of Far Cry 4 still. I'm yeah, telling you. That, that's, one that has day. nothing to do with how good the game is. That's just me and time. I know, but I'm just telling you, one day we got to get into it. Far Cry yeah. is amazing. Like, it's so much fun. I mean, it's similar to kind of the Elder Scrolls and Fallout games, but at the same time, you're, like, hunting animals. It's more about hunting and an urban environment. Like, it's so good. I love Far Cry, and... Being set in prehistoric times in 10,000 BC, you're going to be hunting woolly mammoths and shit and saber-toothed tigers. Like, this looks sick. I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. They have a trailer up for it, and it's pretty good. Like, I, I'll be honest with you. It it looks kind of neat, and it completely original idea. Yeah, and uh, the thing is, like, we're seeing these prehistoric games all of a sudden. Like, we saw Ark Survival Evolved, which is huge on PC. Horizon mm-hmm. Zero Dawn isn't technically prehistoric, but it's like a... It has those elements, and this is like I'm. I love prehistoric. Like I'm super into that time period, and I think it's super cool that we're starting to see games like this. How it's much nice to you... see Far Cry kind of mix up the formula a little bit too. Yeah, this is very different for them. There's gonna be no guns, no like. I don't know if there'll be outposts or not, or how it'll work, but you're gonna be walking from place to place. You'll be crafting your own weapons with sticks and rocks, and it's gonna be super cool. I was really happy. I'm sorry, you guys. I had to black out for a minute, but I was really happy about this news. I saw the trailer as well, as well as a little developer chat about this new project. And I told Kate I was really happy to see a developer actually stepping back because as this new technology is advancing, it seems like every developer wants to advance the games. They want to push the games further in the future. They want to have new technology and robotic arms. I was just really happy to see somebody go the opposite direction with this current gen technology and and bring us something like a Turok-type game. That's what this appears to be. And so I told her, seeing more games like this will open up more doors for games like the old Call of Duties, you know, where you go back in time and and back to to muskets and things of that nature. Uh, I want to see this game. I want to see what it's going to be like to be back in those times with this type of new technology as far as video game hardware goes. I'm excited for it. I'm tired of the same thing regurgitated over and over again. I think the prehistoric era is like a friggin' cool era to play a game in, too. Like, I think that's awesome. I can't believe there haven't been more prehistoric games. The other thing, too, is a lot of people were thinking at first, like, this will be like a Blood Dragon, like a $15 game. But it sounds like this is a AAA experience. Like, this is the game that Ubisoft said was coming before March 2016. This is their AAA they hadn't announced. So this is going to be a full, like, $60 game. Like, it's a full release. This technically could be, like, Far Cry 5. We don't really know. But it's coming February next year, so we don't have long to wait. And I am so excited for this. Do you yeah, guys think they're cool. going to start annualizing Far Cry games now? Aren't they already? Have, haven't they been? Mm. No. Far Nine, Cry 3, Far Cry 4, Far Cry... Uh, was it Blood Dragon? or? Yeah, yeah. Blood Dragon. That was, Blood that Dragon was sort was of part of 3, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's been every year. I thought that 3 came out in 2012, didn't it? Yes. And right. then two so years every, ago, every other Blood year. Dragon came okay. out. Blood Dragon came out in 2013. Yeah. yeah. And then four came out in 2014. Yeah. yeah. So they're missing it by a couple months for a yearly release here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they're really pushing the envelope because these games are really awesome. So yeah, awesome absolutely. that they still sit inside the plastic on our game shrines. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. I couldn't resist, bro. Yeah. All right. So the next story is Nielsen lists the most anticipated games this holiday season across each platform as voted by gamers. And uh, there were zero surprises in here for me. I was hoping to see something like that wasn't necessarily on my radar, but there's nothing. And on the multi-platform list, we got Call of Duty Black Ops 3. No big surprise there. Fallout 4. uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which... mm, I was surprised on anybody's list. Need for Speed, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Rock Band 4. Uh, for the Xbox One, Halo. For the PS4, the Nathan Drake Collection. You know, these are not surprises. I guess the nature of the list, me, you know, kind of excludes, like, smaller games or games that there aren't on are people's radar. There are a but. few things I was a little surprised by on this list. The first thing is that Black Ops 3 was at 98% 
Me too. Um, interest rate versus Fallout, Fallout 4 and 95. Yeah, I was really surprised to see that because Fallout is huge. Like, and Call of Duty is a yearly thing, but a Fallout, we haven't had that in a long time. Well, and people are excited for it. Robbie, that only means one thing to me. That means a lot of people played that beta because before that beta came out, people have been hating on Call of Duty. The last couple of Call of Duties have not been fan favorites. So yeah. a lot of people played this new Call of Duty, and it's been, I guess, through word of mouth, people have been really excited about it. I'm really excited about it. I don't know if I'm more excited for this game than Fallout 4. I We've talked 4. about how most of us have been <laughs> lost by Advanced Warfare, but this is getting me back into Call of Duty. Call this of is Duty what I want. Black Ops 3 is going to be the shit. I'm just telling yeah. you, man. I, I love the beta. It's awesome. And then the other surprising thing, this game just came out, and this is actually what I've been playing this week, is the uh, Nathan Drake collection. It's only at 79% for the PS4. You would think that would be higher, but... Yeah, especially <laughs> with our next story. But let me ask you a question. If you could only it's have like one... Though. It's not like it's it's not like it's uh, Uncharted 4. It's the Nathan Drake collection. That's yeah, true. But, but there is a little bit of news about this game. But before we get to that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys a question. Based on what you've seen so far, Robbie, which game would you pick if you could only have one? Uh, Star Wars Battlefront or Black Ops 3? You play both betas. <sighs> That is so hard. I love both. Um, I think the Battlefront beta, and I'm surprised I'm saying this, was actually probably smoother. I mean, Black Ops 3 beta was still pretty smooth, but it did have some network issues. Like, the Battlefront beta has been completely smooth. No network issues, no lag, nothing. The hit detection is spot on, which I never thought I'd say, but... God damn, like, I can't believe we're even having this conversation right now. <laughs> I know. I saw you smiling so hard, right? That's really hard. I might have to go with Black Ops 3 just because... Um, I, I, I would go with Black Ops 3. Because it's got that Black and zombies. It's got more content for me that I'd get into. So. Black Ops 3, I'm sorry. I know it's off subject. It completely recaptured my heart, man. That was just an awesome, awesome beta. I'm, I can't wait for it. All right. So, continuing on the news, Halo 5 Guardians goals gold ahead of release. Halo 5, man. Yeah, yeah, that's this, good news. This is one of the watching all the trailers and the stuff that they're doing to really get excitement up for this game has worked. I am totally in on this game. Especially because you look at that list we were just reading uh, for the Xbox One, the Nielsen list. It was a hundred percent excitement I'm, rating. That's crazy. Like, it's a new Halo game on the Xbox. You know, that's a big deal. <laughs> that is pretty <laughs> big. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a lot of people, me included, who bought the original Xbox for Halo. Yeah. Everybody did. If you bought an Xbox, you bought it for Halo. You did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't miss a Halo game. I don't necessarily enjoy every one I buy, but this one looks like it's going to be pretty good, and the multiplayer is amazing. Yeah, I'm excited to see where the story goes, because there's the whole conflict between Locke and Chief, whether Chief really betrayed everybody, and Locke's going out to like hunt him and stuff. I am so interested to see how that turns out. And the beta was awesome, too. I love the multiplayer. So I'm yeah. super excited for this game. I'm more amped than anything else because it seems like uh, 343 has taken Halo on a dark path. Before, it seemed like it was kind of a He-Man type situation or you're going against Skeletor. Here, it seems like you got to fight your own inner demons. And Plus, we don't know exactly where we're, where the story is going to go. But it just seems so much darker than usual. And that's one thing that I'm really excited to see. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Definitely looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. All right, so the next bit of news is something that Robbie put in our list. And so Robbie's yes. gonna, Robbie's I thought this gonna... was cool. So this is not necessarily gaming news, but I thought this was just a cool story to share with everybody. So Lexus, the car manufacturer, they built an entirely fully functional electric car completely out of cardboard. And I'm going to bring up the picture here in just a sec. Should be right here. Can you guys see this? Just yeah. keep talking. Let me, yeah. So... This so they go into a bit of detail about how it was like incredibly hard to make this, but this entire car is made out of cardboard. This whole thing, from the wheels right there and the rims to the headlights, everything is made entirely out of cardboard. Apparently, there's a lot of work to do. They said it took about three months to make this car in production, and it's one of a kind. What do you guys think? It's fucking beautiful. Is it waterproof? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's got an electric engine. Like, you can drive this. Thing. Like, that's really cool to me. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, you have to laminate it before you take it out, though, you know? That's like, that's really cool in a completely useless way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, know what I mean? It's like, it. wow, somebody, like, spent a lot of time and money on this. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> cool, <laughs> I guess. It's horrible, though. 
<laughs> it's yeah. like if, if you take it out and you do have a rainy day, your car broke down. What's wrong with yeah. the car? It got wet. You thought you, thought you were fucked in your convertible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh, I'm sure water, problem now. <laughs> I'm sure water turn into a fucking van. That'd be crazy. Dude, do you guys hear the PS4 has a price drop? Three hundred fifty bucks. What? Yeah. Unless what? you're in Canada, it's still four hundred thirty dollars. So, yeah, right. whatever. It's Thanksgiving. We got no bad feelings for you. <laughs> Thanks. Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah, man, three hundred fifty bucks for a PS4. That's a pretty good deal. Man, if you haven't gotten to the current gen. It's time. I know I've been like really down to the point about it, but it, there is no excuse now. I'm being yeah. honest. Unless yeah, you don't excuse. have 350 bucks, so that's the, a pretty good excuse. The, Save the money. Only, You've had the, <laughs> the only thing that I can, I got to say about this news, I made a video about this. Well played, Sony. Sony played a hell of a hand uh, announcing this and changing the price right now. Sony has mm-hmm. no great games uh, for launch for the end quarter. Microsoft has everything. They got Tomb Raider. They got Gears of War. They got Halo, right? Yeah. They got games that people are excited about. Forza. P- Sony has nothing. Sony's still been considerably, uh, you know, dominating the competition. But with this price drop, it might be enough to make those people who wanted a PS4 versus an Xbox One, even though Xbox One has all these great games, still get a PS4. I think that might be a little bit of. It might be enough of a push to keep. Keep people on the, uh, the going into the holiday stuff. season. You got parents going into Best Buy, and they say, "Okay, here's an Xbox One for four hundred. Here's a PS4 for three fifty. Little Timmy's getting a PS4 this year, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Daddy's getting some DVDs." <laughs> <laughs> we know where you're sending the wife, Briar. Want some DVDs, but the Xbox One is three forty nine as well. So now, oh, it is. Oh, it's, yeah. I thought it was still four hundred. No, they dropped the price to three forty nine. But uh, Do you guys Sony, think that Microsoft is going to overtake Sony this quarter, or how's it going to go? If they uh, don't this quarter, it's a wrap. If they can't do it right now, nah. Nah. if they can't do it right now, then there's no. Of course, they can't outsell the PlayStation Four at this point. Not in. One I quarter. mean, just like win the holiday, because I think if they can't do it with their exclusive lineup that they have going into this fourth quarter and the price drop. They got some work to do. Like they definitely will have a tough road ahead. I think. I don't hey, think it's like doom. This, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Just like the PS3 caught up late in the PS3, the PS3, Xbox 360 generation. Xbox has plenty of time. They're still making money hand over fist. The Xbox One sold much faster than the Xbox 360 did at launch. It's not like they're in dire straits here. It's just that the PS4 is selling so fast, it makes the Xbox One look like it's selling slowly in comparison. But in Absolutely. reality, the Xbox One is selling quite well. Yeah. Uh, so no, this it's not game over if they don't outsell the PS4 this time. Uh, I suspect that they'll sell a lot of Xbox Ones based on their very strong software lineup. The new Halo game is always really a big event for Microsoft and Xbox. Just in the uh, gaming, and Tomb Raider, that's huge. Like, that's big. That's really yeah, big. the Tomb Raider exclusive I don't think is as big a deal, but still, there's a lot of Tomb Raider fans out there. Um, I, you know, no, I don't, I don't know that they'll outsell PS4 this holiday season. I think the PS4 really has a stronger uh, name recognition kind of brand right now. Yeah. Um, but I, it's not over for them. Definitely. I mean, Sony has just killed it this generation. Like they are ridiculous how well they're doing right now. Well, it's yeah, insane. They, a lot of their success is coming from. It's still coming from Microsoft. Microsoft just absolutely fucked up. fucking up in 2013. They fucked up bad. Okay. They did. They just they just they, angered they, everybody. Yep. And, yeah. and a lot of people are having subconscious fanboyism still based on that. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you there, Brian. I don't think that it's a it's a a sprint. I think it's a long haul. And if they continue to have Phil Spencer in there, he's gradually turned the tide. I mean, yeah. all it takes is a little bit of time. You know, uh, I don't think they're, they're going to be able to raise the price, but as long as they can increase their install base, they should be fine. No, uh, but hardware gets cheaper to make over time. You know, ch- chip dies get smaller, things get easier to manufacture, things the components inside the box get cheaper as time go on. Yeah. So, you know, eventually, you know, you could be selling the thing for two hundred bucks and making the same amount of profit you were when you're selling it for five hundred. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, manufacturing as time goes on, it gets cheaper and cheaper to produce. Right. So, price drops will happen. Another thing, too, is that Phil Spencer this week also said that he actually doesn't know whether they're going to be able to catch up to the PS4 this week because of 
Sony's done such a good job. That's actually part of our news. Do you guys agree with Phil that the Xbox One can't catch up, or how is it going to work? He didn't say that they can't catch up. He says he's unsure because... He's unsure, it's, yeah. Sorry. Sony, Sony I mean. he said that Sony has a great product, and they got a lot of good you know, press, and people really excited for their product. Never once did he, did he bash him. That's why I say he's such a classy guy. I don't know, man. I think there's about half the Xbox One sold as PS4s you know, worldwide at this point which is probably close to 10 million more PS4s and Xbox Ones, yeah. maybe 8 million, somewhere around there. That's a lot to catch up. But like Briar said, at the end of the gaming life cycle, who knows what they'll have right now, as long as Phil Spencer and the Xbox team keep people excited about their exclusives, the stuff that you can only get on the Xbox and not mm-hmm. anywhere else, then they can turn the tide. As long as they keep yeah. the excitement and the morale up for people who play Xbox Ones, then, then they got a good chance. they got a yeah. strong lineup this year. You know, yeah. they got a real strong lineup this year. Yeah. And if they can come out the gate every year like this, if every holiday season they're putting out, like, big games like this, and it looks like next holiday season it will be big games. You know, from the rumors we've heard, you know... I think next year it's going to be... the multi-platform stuff like Destiny, Call of Duty, and Fallout, right? But you can't play Halo anywhere else. You can't play the Tomb Raider game anywhere else for a year. A year. You yeah. know, that kind of stuff... You know, does make up people's minds, and if they get enough of that year after year, and Sony doesn't seem to be, you know, knocking it out of the park with exclusives here. Oh, you know, no. Nathan Drake is a big game, or you know, Uncharted is a big game, but the Uncharted collection is not selling consoles. I'm sorry, it's not. Well, well that kind of that kind of goes into the next little bit of news that we got. Eighty percent of PlayStation Four owners have never played an Uncharted game, according to Naughty Dog. I can't believe that. How have you not played Uncharted? Like, that franchise is huge. I, I played Xbox 360 because I played Call of Duty. <laughs> well, yeah. then you missed out. Where were you last generation? That's all where, I got to say to that. Where were on you? the Xbox 360 playing Call of Duty. <laughs> well, you made a mistake. <laughs> I just told you where I was. <laughs> well, well, I mean, Naughty Dog did their own independent study on this, and I don't know how accurate it is. I actually did a video on it, too. But if that is the case, and all these PS4 owners, 80%, even if it's 50% of PS4 owners... That's a lot of people who get a lot of bang for their buck with Uncharted Nathan Drake Collection. And I don't know if it'll sell units because everybody already has one, but this game is going to sell very well. Robbie, you have the game, right? Yeah, I picked up the Nathan Drake Collection this week. Um, I absolutely love those games. I just beat Uncharted 1. I'm, I'm starting my playthrough in Uncharted 2. I mean, Uncharted 1, the- I saw some gameplay Uncharted 1. I forgot. I thought that game looked amazing when it came out. It looks like crap now. now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even with the remaster, like it looks a little rough. I mean, it looks pretty good now, and it runs yeah. 60 frames. Like, the game still is, looks fantastic, though. Yeah, the game is still fantastic. The Uncharted series is an amazing collection of games, and I'm really enjoying them. Like, Especially Uncharted 2 is way better looking than Uncharted 1. It actually looks gorgeous. It it's, really it's, one look of, gorgeous. it's one of the best games of the PS3 generation. I, it was amazing. Yeah, and I Uncharted think 3 you, was really good, too. Hell, yeah. It, it definitely was. Uncharted 3, I didn't play it. A lot of people kind of chewed me out in my comment section. They said, you didn't play 3 fantastic. because I watched my wife beat it, okay? I watched my, my lovely wife play the game, and, and she beat it in front of me. So it was almost it's kind of like, like an action movie. movie. Like, you only need to see it once. Yeah. yeah. Damn it. Guys, I want to give a quick shout-out in the chat, though. We uh, have somebody with a birthday here. D's what Nuts. Up? Wonderful D's name. Nuts. Yeah. Whose birthday is it? These nuts. These nuts. <laughs> nuts said today's my 24th birthday. No better way to end it with some BC Thoughts Live. Thank you so much. That is awesome to hear. Thank you for watching the show. We appreciate that. Happy hey. birthday, man. That's awesome. Hey, hey, Robbie, something came in the mail today. These nuts. These nuts. nuts. <laughs> Got him. Oh, that's Happy hilarious. Birthday, These nuts, man. Happy birthday, bro. 24. That's a good year. Go yeah. meet a pretty lady and drink a nice beer. All right, so. I guess our final little bit of news today, guys. Rise of the Tomb Raider has gone gold. The game's microtransactions and DLC have been detailed. Robbie? Yeah, so the microtransactions are kind of what you'd expect. Basically, there are points in the game you can get to buy different cards that come with, like, random items, and you can basically pay real-world money to get more points and buy more of those cards. Like, that's these, what it is. It can be good or bad. It depends how they do just, it. just for the multiplayer, correct? No, no, there is no multiplayer in Tomb Raider. Oh, damn, you're right. Yeah. Is this going to change the dynamic of... I mean, what is it going to be? Is it going to be visual? Is it going to be new weapons? Yeah, it'll be stuff like that. It'll be, like, 
I think clothing and stuff like that and different items, but in the season Spring? past, they have like some add-ons they've talked about and different like survival challenges and stuff. So it's pretty basic stuff. I'm really looking forward to Rise of the Tomb Raider. It, since the game is finished now and it's done, I'm shocked they didn't push it because of Fallout 4. But, well, yeah. God, that's a bad choice. Jeez. I know. They're going to get killed. Like they really back. That's a horrible decision. Yeah. I am oh. playing this game, definitely. But I'm not playing it until probably after Christmas. <laughs> January, <laughs> February, I'll be no playing way. it. Yeah. I'm really looking forward. I love the first Tomb Raider game. I've said that a bunch of times. I'm really looking forward to this, but Fallout 4 is just... My heart belongs to Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is going to be one of the games of the generation. It easily could. Like It's going to be in a prehistoric day for yeah. gaming. Damn. Long I'm excited. God, what an awful decision. <laughs> That's a really I, fucking stupid choice. And now it's done. Like we're, I was thinking they got to delay it. They got to delay it. Well, this is the proof. There you go. It's coming out. Mm-hmm. I don't There's know. There's a lot of DLC that's coming out for this. They're going to have these uh, ex- expedition cards, two types, foil and common. Um, they're going to have a $30 season pass that's going to include an endurance mode, a temple, cold darkness awakened. I don't know what that is. Combat wave, so a horde mode. They're going to yeah, have in-game content, like steady uh, outfits, weapons, uh, these expedition cards. Uh, they're going to have a score attack mode. <laughs> there, there's I a lot of different like stuff coming for this thing. I never like when they announce season passes before the game is actually out. Like, you don't need to, to get it out right before we've even played it. I will play it first, and then I'll decide if I want season pass. Don't... It depends. Like, if you do a season pass for Call of Duty, and I'm a Call of Duty fan, I already know I'm buying all the DLC, so That's season pass is, is going to save me 10 bucks. then great. I'm buying yeah. it. Yeah. But a season pass where I don't even know what's in it? No, go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's just like with uh, Batman Arkham Knight when they charged $40, $50 for theirs and they didn't say what was in the season pass. Like, that's horrible. Yeah, no. Don't do that. Don't like that's, that yeah. that's how you piss off consumers right there, how you piss off people like you and I. Like, that's just... Hey, what about me? Greed. Well, you too, yeah. Uh-huh. No, I'm saying you guys. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean. Just, just... Yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. All right, we got a few questions from Twitter today. You want to go through them real quick? We only got a few. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, I just lost them. My bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come, back. Back. <laughs> Come back. Come back. All right, the first one's from Bezio. What's going on with goddamn etheric light? This is a Destiny question. Oh, etheric yeah, light I saw was that. The, the most important material you could get in uh, House of Wolves and is completely useless now. It's gone pretty much. Didn't change it for anything. We got something's going to happen with this. I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I my guess is that they'll either bring back a use for it in the future, or it's kind of done. They'll just allow us to trade it in for like rep or something. I but think yeah, yeah. There's no use for it right now. Uh, next question: Is Prison of Elders good for anything now? Nope. Another Destiny question. You should. Pro- you guys should probably include Destiny in the tweet just because. I well, I mean. My ch- channel's kind of built on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> absolutely. I have an issue with that, though. When people ask a question like about a specific thing, and there's no way to allude that it's actually that thing, and they don't mention it in the comment, that bugs me. That really does. I don't it know says why. It Prison of Elders. What else could that be? <laughs> I know, but it still bugs me. Like, just include Destiny. In the it's like it's be a prison I feel like there's a lot of rage built up inside it's of you. It's fucking Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. You're yep. supposed to be thankful and happy. God I'm damn excited it. for tonight. I really am. Yeah. You go put some oh, damn yeah. turkey in your mouth. <laughs> there's no real point in running a prison elders right now. Nope, there's uh, no point. Even if you get exotics out of it, the it's exotics is not... one. The yeah. only reason to do this is for the elder sniper weapons. That's it. Just the chest at the end. That's it. Maybe you get those. Yeah, well, this, I, uh, I read it five uh, times. Uh, Grimoire. And... Grimoire. Yeah. You want to get that Grimoire card <laughs> for killing Skolas? That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, yeah. The last one, are you good? If not, then get good, please. We're Cooper <laughs> Hybert. We're great. <laughs> I think we're pretty good. I mean, I'm good, <laughs> I'm good too. Yeah. Like, all, if all... I'm not good, I'm going to get good. <laughs> if we're not just, good, we'll get better. I just got good. good, good you you just got good? Yeah. Hey, man, feels, congratulations. That's awesome. Feel, feels good. <laughs> I bet it does. <laughs> all right, I think that's going to do it, guys. Anything else you want to uh, pimp out? Anything else you want to promote? D's nuts. No, D's nuts. I won't promote those today. I won't promote D's nuts. Don't worry. 
Thank you, everybody, for watching the Beastly Thought Show today. We appreciate you guys joining us every week. Be sure to check out the Beastly Gamer channel, Robbie Skull's channel, and, of course, you're already here, the Briar Rabbit channel. Thank you all so much. You guys are the best. We really appreciate the support. I cannot thank you all enough. Thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. I really These mean that. These nuts! <laughs>